You are live in the CNN newsroom. I'm Ryan Nobles in for Ana Cabrera, and we do have breaking news coming out of Maryland this evening. That's where the governor has declared a state of emergency for the area around Ellicott City. This after a torrential downpour caused massive flooding there. That's police issuing a strong warning to drivers, telling them to turn around and not drive through the town's flooded streets. Swiftwater rescue teams have also been deployed, and there are reports of buildings collapsing. The town is under a flash flood watch until early tomorrow morning. Now let's start with meteorologist Tom Sater. He's going to join me now. Uh, Tom, what can you tell us about the latest on this flooding in Maryland? Well, Ryan, it's not over with yet. We're looking at a pattern of rain that we've been stuck in for over two and a half weeks with all of the southeastern U.S. getting hit with thunderstorms every day. But look at the lightning pattern from areas of the Delmarva region, Washington, D.C. County, kind of curving back to the south and the areas of the southwest. There's a stationary boundary that's been set up for, uh, seems like, over two weeks. And with that, we're seeing these thunderstorms ride right along that boundary. We're going to get in closer because we're looking now at most likely what will be round three of the thunderstorms moving toward the region. We've already seen rainfall rates one, two inches an hour. Some areas have already picked up four, five, and six. And we had one batch, second batch, and we still off to the west have more thunderstorm cells that could drop a couple more inches. This is eerily similar to what happened on the 30th of July just two years ago in 2016. This is a historic area. I know it well. It's beautiful. I mean, homes and businesses. When you watch this area, at one end of the town, there's a high terrain, and some will blame it on the topography. Some, obviously, is the infrastructure of this historic town because all the water is funneling down to the lower part of Main Street, uh, B&O uh, Railroad Museum. Homes, businesses, everyone who was uh, told to stay in place has had to get up to the second, even third story of these buildings. Two years ago when this happened, and more rain on the way, we lost two precious lives, and they thought for sure that they were not going to be able to recover. They thought maybe only 30% of the businesses would return. Miraculously, about 90 to 96 uh, came back. Great news. But then they rededicated the city a year later, and here we are one year later, and it's happening again. The uh, warnings right now, uh, this is a dire warning from the National Weather Service out of Sterling, Virginia, saying everyone, including the media, get out into the highest ground, and not just around Ellicott City, because you've got the Patapsco River, you got all of Howard County, and Arundel County, and with more rainfall on the way in this third round, even though in some areas the water may look like it's starting to recede, you've got the rivers that are going to start to swell. So again, this pattern that we have been set up is just a terrible situation because now, besides the thunderstorms this evening, you toss in this rain shield from Alberta lifting northward, and that's going to give us a, more of a problem in the days ahead. So uh, what we have is what's called a flash flood emergency, and that has now been extended to to 1030 this evening. So again, what happened two years ago is happening again. We're having some reports that we're actually seeing uh, the water levels a little bit higher in that historic area. So they're actually getting to the point up to the second story of these historic homes. Now keep this in mind. Because it's a historic area and you've got that high terrain, you've got a narrow roads. Some of these buildings go back not just to the early 1800s, but the late 1700s. And you have to think of the stonework, uh, the masonry, the cobblestones. How many times has the masonry work been repaired over the decades? So their fear two years ago were building collapses, and now that's actually what we're seeing now. Numerous 911 calls, water rescues taking place, but with a third round of more rainfall moving to the area, there is great, great concern, obviously as you would expect, Ryan. And Tom, I've seen reports that where officials there are, are warning folks, just because the rain may have calmed down for a little bit, that doesn't mean that it's okay uh, for you to go back uh, into your homes uh, or out into the streets, right? They need to be concerned about this third round of rain that is about to come through, right? Yeah, and it's not just uh, the area of the historic district. Now, Patapsco River runs through quite a few communities, but what we're seeing on the radar is what we call back building. The instability continues to fire this up. We call it training, like the boxcars of a train, one thunderstorm cell after another. So with areas that are picked up over six inches in a short amount of time, and you toss in a couple more, that's just going to aggravate the situation. But not just in around uh, Baltimore and uh, Howard County, but now spreading out to much uh, longer areas, including Washington, D.C. And you can see cars just being 
uh, yep. carried away uh, by these uh, waters. Uh, if you're in a car, obviously you turn around, don't drown is what they always say. Uh, do not take this lightly if you're living yeah. in this part of the country. This is yeah. a serious Ryan, problem. Two, two years ago, over 200 cars were washed downstream. Over yeah. 200, and many had to ride out those floodwaters, unfortunately. All right. Unbelievable pictures. Tom uh, Sater, thank you for your update. We're going to continue uh, to keep a close eye on this, uh, attempt to get uh, in contact with some folks that are dealing with this uh, to get their perspective as well uh, as we continue to follow the breaking news uh, of uh, flash flooding uh, in Maryland.